That's right. I remember one message Farrakhan preached. He said, some folk call me a prophet. He said, that's too small of a title for me. Wow. That's something to say. Imagine. Imagine that. Listen, it's hard to be a brother. If the title prophet wasn't too small for Jesus. Mm. For Moses said, God shall raise up a prophet like me. Gino Jennings, the leader of the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ, is renowned for his direct and uncompromising approach to religious teachings. His ministry emphasizes strict adherence to biblical doctrines, often challenging other religious leaders and movements that he perceives to deviate from Orthodox Christian beliefs. One such figure Jennings frequently critiques is Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam. Farrakhan, a controversial and influential figure, has made numerous claims about his spiritual role and origins, which Jennings vehemently opposes. Jennings' critiques are rooted in his commitment to maintaining traditional Christian doctrines and protecting his congregation from what he sees as false teachings. I went through an experience that verifies the truth of what I said. Now, some people think I'm a prophet. It's true. Some preachers call me a prophet. But I have to tell you, the word prophet is too cheap a word. Louis Farrakhan has often described himself in mystical terms, claiming to come directly from the light of the sun to fulfill a role similar to that of biblical prophets like Jesus and Moses. This self-description diverges significantly from traditional religious titles and roles as understood in both Christianity and mainstream Islam. Farrakhan's assertion positions him uniquely, not just as a religious leader, but as someone with a quasi-divine origin. Jesus is prophet, and Jesus is minister, and Jesus is apostle. I want to show you why he's all of this. Minister simply means to serve. See, when the Lord says through Moses, God shall raise up a prophet like me, prophet represent messenger and Jesus was the seal of the prophet. Gino Jennings rejects these claims outright. In his view Farrakhan's self-description is not only unbiblical but also misleading. Jennings emphasizes that according to Christian doctrine prophets are individuals chosen by God to deliver his messages to humanity. They are distinct from God and derive their authority solely from their divine commission. By contrast, Farrakhan's claim of coming from the sun introduces an element of divinity or cosmic significance that Jennings finds problematic. In Christian theology, prophets have a well-defined role. They are messengers of God called to deliver his word to the people. The Bible contains numerous accounts of prophets who played critical roles in guiding and correcting the Israelites. Prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel were instrumental in conveying God's messages, often calling for repentance and foretelling future events. Now wait. Prophets come in the absence of God like moonlight in the absence of the sun. They speak to you darkly. But I don't come like that. I come directly from the light of the sun. And so prophet is not for me. I come to fulfill that which you have read of your prophets. Jesus Christ, according to Christian belief, fulfills multiple roles, including that of a prophet. However, Jesus is also seen as the Messiah, the Son of God, and an apostle. The term apostle means one who is sent emphasizing Jesus' divine mission to save humanity. This multifaceted nature of Jesus' role is central to Christian doctrine, and Jennings underscores this to highlight the comprehensive mission of Jesus compared to other figures. Jennings' critique of Farrakhan is multifaceted. Firstly, he argues that Farrakhan's claims do not align with the biblical definition of a prophet. 
By asserting that he comes from the sun, Farrakhan steps outside the traditional bounds of prophetic roles as defined in the Bible. Jennings views this as a significant theological error that could mislead followers. So in the Old Testament, the prophets was the highest spiritual office you can hold. There was no apostles in the Old Testament. The office didn't exist. Only the prophets was the highest office that exists. Oh, but here come the prophet Haggai, by God's permission, telling us that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Latter house mean church of the last days. Former mean the church of the past, and the church of the past was the people of God, Israel, in the wilderness. Secondly, Jennings is concerned about the broader implications of Farrakhan's claims for the Christian community. He sees such assertions as a form of false teaching that can confuse believers and draw them away from biblical truths. Jennings' ministry is dedicated to upholding what he sees as the purity of Christian doctrine, and he is vigilant against any teachings he perceives as deviations from this standard. The Nation of Islam, under Farrakhan's leadership, presents a unique blend of religious beliefs that incorporate elements of Islam and African-American cultural identity. Founded in the early 20th century, the movement has been influential in addressing issues of racial inequality and empowering African Americans. However, its teachings often diverge from mainstream Islamic doctrines and traditional Christian beliefs. Farrakhan's leadership has been marked by a charismatic and often controversial approach. He has made numerous statements and claims that have sparked debate and criticism. Jennings, rooted in a traditional Christian framework, finds many of these claims to be theologically unsound. He particularly opposes any teachings that he believes distort or misrepresent the core messages of the Bible. For Jennings, maintaining doctrinal purity is paramount. He believes that the Bible provides clear and unambiguous teachings that must be adhered to without compromise. This belief drives his critiques of other religious leaders and movements. Jennings views his role as a guardian of biblical truth, charged with the responsibility of protecting his congregation from false teachings. In this context, Jennings' critiques of Farrakhan are not personal attacks, but rather part of his broader mission to uphold and defend Christian doctrine. By addressing what he sees as theological errors, Jennings aims to ensure that his followers remain grounded in biblical truth and are not led astray by conflicting teachings. One of the key points Jennings emphasizes is the dual role of Jesus as both a prophet and an apostle. This distinction is crucial in Christian theology. As a prophet, Jesus delivered God's messages to humanity, foretold future events, and called people to repentance. As an apostle, he was sent by God with a divine mission to save humanity through his death and resurrection. This dual role underscores the comprehensive nature of Jesus' ministry and mission. Jennings uses this to highlight the depth and breadth of Jesus' work, contrasting it with the claims of other religious figures. By emphasizing Jesus' unique role, Jennings reinforces the centrality of Christ in Christian doctrine and the importance of adhering to his teachings. Jennings' critiques are also motivated by a pastoral concern for his congregation. He is deeply committed to protecting his followers from teachings that he believes could harm their faith. By addressing figures like Farrakhan and challenging their claims, Jennings aims to equip his congregation with the knowledge and discernment needed to navigate a complex religious landscape. This protective stance is a hallmark of Jennings' ministry. He regularly addresses contemporary issues and religious movements, providing his followers with a clear and uncompromising interpretation of biblical teachings. His goal is to ensure that they remain steadfast in their faith and are not swayed by conflicting doctrines. Gino Jennings' critique of Louis Farrakhan and his claims reflects a broader commitment to upholding biblical teachings and maintaining doctrinal purity. Jennings emphasizes the importance of understanding and preserving the traditional roles of prophets and apostles as defined in the Bible. His critiques are driven by a desire to protect his congregation and ensure that they remain grounded in the truth of Scripture. Jennings' ministry is characterized by a steadfast dedication to biblical principles and a willingness to challenge any teachings he perceives as deviations from these principles. His approach underscores the importance of theological accuracy and the need for vigilance in preserving the integrity of Christian doctrine.
Through his critiques, Jennings aims to fortify the faith of his followers and guard against the influence of what he sees as false teachings.